Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, we are going to configure Samba server on OpenWRT to share the files between your USB rise or your USB hard disk over the router to your LAN devices. There are different tutorials on the internet as well as the OpenWRT.org website and the tutorial is based on Samba 3. However, for this tutorial, we are going to use Samba Server 4. The tutorial is based on this documentation from OpenWRT.org, but I will add some modification to work with Samba 4. Speaking about file sharing with the routers, the best file system which should be used is ext4 or Linux file system in general. However, most of our USB or hard drive is using NTFS, so the guide will be based on NTFS. Right here, I have a USB hard drive. This is a Toshiba 60GB of LSD and it will pack in a USB 3.0 to SATA adapters. And you can see this is 60GB and inside we have some folders and some videos. All right and also a text file. So this we connected to the computer via USB as so you can see it is USB 3.0. Before the configuration, we should have configured our USB storage. Which means by default, OpenWRT only support a standard of USB input, but not the USB storage. Therefore, we will need to install package and configure our router to work with the USB device or the USB hard drive. Since we are using an NTFS file system, which is not a native Linux file system, we will need some other extensions or package to enable read and write support for OpenWRT. So that would be too long for the introduction and let's just do this. First of all, let's open the browsers and log into the router management page at 192.168.1.1. I'm using the Linksys WRT 1900AC, as you can see. And first of all, let's go to system and shop where to update the package list. I will do most of the configuration and installation using DC because this video is aimed for beginner. However, there is one package, which is the Samba 4, that needs to be installed with command line to avoid any timeouts, and we will only do that later. Let's install our package. So first of all, it's a K-Mod USB storage. This is the kernel for USB support, okay? Let's just install them all. Okay, so K-Mod USB storage, K-Mod USB storage extras, and K-Mod USB storage UAS. Perfect. The second one. And the last one. So now the driver had been installed. Okay. And then we can try to install the USB utility to check if our USB device is detected. But I don't think we need it to troubleshoot. Okay, so we can just skip that. Now we need to install another package to automatically mount the USB hard drive to the OpenWRT. So it will be block mount. All right, let's install that. Click install. And finally, to enable read and write support on OpenWRT, we need to install this NTFS that 3G. Alright, so let's just do that. Install and install. The installation is finished. Now we can connect a USB hard drive or your USB to the router and reboot it. The USB is connected to the Linksys WRT 1900AC router via the USB 3.0 port. If you are using command line, you can install this package. USB utility to verify that or else we can just proceed with reboot the router. Okay, so we go to system and reboot. All right. 
and let's wait for it. The router is off and you can hear the fan is spinning in the background. Let's log into it. And now on system, we should have the mount point. Okay. Now let's click on generate config to find all currently attached file system and swap and replace configuration with default based on what will detect. A USB hard drive had been detected and it is going to be mounted on MNT slot NDA1. But before that, we need to click on the enable button and click save and apply. So at this time, we can surely confirm that our USB hard drive or our USB device has been successfully mounted. We can see our device show up on the mounted file system right here. We are done with the USB storage and now let's install the Samba package. For Samba Server 4, installation is going to be a big file and I will do it with the command interface to avoid timeout. If you are using Windows, you can use the command line or even PowerShell to do that. So 192.168.1.1, which is our router IP, the port is 22 by default. Click open, accept, root, and the password. And before we begin the installation, let's run opkg update. The package has been successfully updated. So you may ask me why I don't go to system, shortware and install Samba 4 and server right here. Actually, I have tried to install Samba 4 dash server with the Lucy, but there is always a timeout message. So I have found out that the best way to install it is using the command line. So let's do it. OPKG install Samba 4 dash server hit enter and it's going to download a lot of packages and dependencies and install everything let's be patient please bear in mind that the package size of samba 4 is very big therefore some of the router may not able to fit it for example the dealing dra42c2 I have tried with the DRA42C2s and tried to remove um, unnecessary packages, but unfortunately, I don't have enough space to install Samba 4. Therefore, I need to install it on the Linksys WRT1900AC. Before the installation of Samba 4, we have 27 megabytes of free space and let checks after the package had been installed. Samba Server 4 has been successfully installed and let's refresh the page and as you can see we only have 7 MB free space in order to manage Samba with Lucy, we will need to install another package, which is Lucy F Samba 4. And now we can click dismiss. So let's log out and log back into Lucy. So now if we go to service, we should see network share. And this is the Lucy app application. All right, so for the interface, if we don't select any interface, the default will be LAN. So in this case, we can either configure LAN or we can just leave it at default. This is the workbook and we don't need to modify that for now. And I will leave everything at default. So the share directories, this is where we're going to configure. So click the add button and right here, the name, we can put anything. For example, add SD right now for the part. Okay. So when you go to the part, you will see the USB device and it been mounted on MNT slash FDA1. So this will be the mount point. So let's close that and copy and paste right here. 
so slash mnt slash lda1 and you can put your folder inside your hard drive or you can just leave it right now okay so read only browse able of course is it enable read only we can just leave it there allow guests yes of course and find create mask and directory mask we can just leave it at default and click save and apply so right now we have successfully configured samba 4 with the samba lucy app now with a smartphone you will be able to connect it to your share directories or your share right without a password i mean with the guest however with windows 10 you may not be able to connect it to your share right because it is security policies on window and only a share right with username and password can be connected on window 10 or you need to do some modification to unblock it but this is not necessary because we can always configure a samba username all right so let's back to the guys and right here we can add the samba users okay so this is how the file looks like and the user is stored in etc slash paswd so let's open the command line right here let me just clear everything and type in v stand for v editor and let's copy this one and right click to paste in and hit enter all right so right now we are editing the slash atc pas wg and let's press the i key on the keyboard to switch to the insert mode and you can see that the very left corner show the i letter okay look let's go to end of the line by press the m key hit enter and let's copy and paste this new line to the file so in this example they are going to use the new user and the new username so we can try to modify that let's say van tc and this is the same van tc so van tc will be the username for our samba account right so let's copy that right click to paste and after we done press the exc keys and then columns and right quick hit enter and after that create a password for the new samba user and in this case we should replace new user with our username so smp paswd stand for password dash a and then our username which is van tc so for the new smp password i will put it van tc123 and tc123 at an assemble all right so now let's run service samba restart to restart the service however since we're using samba 4 we need to put it samba 4 hit enter and all right so now let's go back to our samba right here and let's change the allow user to when tc and I will disable allow guests, all right? Because I only want people who have access to my share right able to browse the file. Hit save. Now we can go to the computers and go to the map network right and click this one. Okay, so let's say it's going to be a letter Z and the directory will be 192.168.1.1 or your LAN IP slash LSD and connect using a different credential. You can of course create the Samba user with the same user that you're using for window. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use a different one. So click finish and let input our username and password. So the username will be VanTC the password event tc123 all right let's check it and hit ok this is wrong hit ok and rate we are successfully connected to our share right on the routers okay so we have 
our files uh, it is going to work as usual so we have the text file the readme file so let's try to place a video and let's see if it works hello everyone and welcome to the AP perfect it is working right so let's try to download a file to a local hard drive and let's see the speed let me copy that and paste to my SSD on the computers and you can see we are having around 70 megabytes of speed this is not really fast but still acceptable all right so with the same file i'm going to upload it to the share right okay let's try to paste it so with samba 4 we are able to reach around 17 megabyte per second still not a really fast speed but acceptable to share file between your computers or between your computers and your smartphone So before we end the videos, I will try to connect to the share right with my smartphone and we will see if it works. Alright, so I'm connected to the OpenWRT 1900AC 5GHz Wi-Fi. And you can see it's on the network shares and wireless right here. WRT 1900AC. Alright, so while we are trying this on the phone, let me run top and let's see the CPU uses when we are copying the file. So this is top. All right. For the test, I'm using CX File Explorer. Click the Add New Location Remote on your local network, and then select this one and input the username and password. So the username event TC, and we have just configured for now, and the password event TC one two three, and hit OK. And yep, we are successfully connected to the share right. Let me try to play the videos. Let me play this one. Open. Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech. And you can see we reach 33 megabyte per second with our smartphone connected to Wi-Fi. This is a not really fast speed. However, with this speed, we should be able to stream the videos and movie over our smart TVs or media player. And on window, the CPU is still at 70% idle. However, if I have a high load around 70 megabyte per second, the CPU can go up to 80% uses. So that's all about this video. And I have shared with you the basic thing to configure your Samba server, as well as how to get an anti abet file system working with OpenRT. However, I do advise configuring your USB device or your USB hard drive in EXT4 or other Linux file system for the best performance. Thanks for watching and I will be see you all in the next video.